Good food means good morale. And after a few days in the past, these soldiers are also a happy squad. They ran the mountain, shot the guns, and think they can do what the old guys did without too much pain. But they haven't gone one-on-one -on -one with Bill Wolf yet. You need a wider angle, so you can block wide, false. Okay, there's the knife trapped. Okay, take it off him, all right? This is not going to... Drive into him. Put your hands on your head. Right there. You couldn't be a very good cook, okay? Meet Bill Wolf, one of the meanest 60-year-olds around. Drive into the guy's chest, okay? Then you got his eyes with these hands. Wolf, a hand-to-hand -hand instructor in the Canadian Army, teaches what's called defendo, fighting dirty. If the guy's going gung-ho on you, protect, bust his legs. If he's got no wheels, he can't fight. He learned his trade from Pat O'Neill, the man who trained the brigade. Well, the hand-to-hand -hand combat was, was with Pat O'Neill, uh, and uh, it was his, his, his kick-and-poke method that he'd, he had developed uh, while he was with the Shanghai police. And he was an expert unarmed combat guy. He was a sixth-degree black belt. He had a very simple philosophy. If you have a gun, use it. If you have a rock, use it. If you have a stick, use it. If you don't have anything, this is what you do. And what you did was forget the rules and fight like a Shanghai street cop. Because what you're thinking is fighting square fight. Okay, what you got to do is get out of the boxing mindset, the sports mindset. If I go boxing, you bust my legs. The first thing he taught you was to close, never retreat, which is what your opponent expects if he menaces you. You gotta close and take the guy out. If he's throwing jabs, whoomp, 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 you're backing up, you fall in a fucking hole. Keep your hands up, cover, bust him. Take his lead leg out, break it. You're thinking sport. Got it? Practice, let's go. Close the hole and kill. Uh, for, for me personally, because I was a kind of a mild, mild-mannered kind of a, a, a youth, I had a hard time with that. I, uh, in the hand-to-hand -hand combat, I, I was always the loser, you know. I didn't think I had it in me to, to do this sort of stuff, but I, after a while, okay. I picked okay. it up. I'm gonna have to hurt him, aren't I? Back to his eyes again, okay? Position, nervous stuff, up, okay? Eyeballs. There's, it's no sport at all, it's kill. And, and, it's, and it's your, how good are you at defense against somebody attacking you so you can be effective in killing. Just that simple. Nice and simple. Grabbing left hand to his wrist, underarm pull. Get behind him, all right? This is called an arm drag. The purpose of it is to clear the front position, take his back so you can pick him up, all right? So nice and simple. In here, pause. Take him out, down, all right? Working it off nice and simple. From here, one, two, pass. The dirtier it is, the better I like it. Got it? Partner out, practice, thank you. The From dirtier it is, the better I like it. The Devil's Brigade way. And Chris Bird is about to find out exactly okay. how dirty that, that can be. Mr. Bird, get over here. Okay. Now, keep your stance, okay? When we're looking in here, eyes. Okay. Chris teaches self-defense and knows his way around a fight. But he's not prepared for Wolf. In case you missed it, here it is again. Right finger, left eye, fight over. Okay, get out of the... He's f***ing decapped now. Understand? Roger, right, son. Where his hands go? He's towards, towards his face. Right? Then you can take advantage of position. Okay, now you guys got to get out of the sports concept. This is brutal, savage, but they asked for it. We can take it and we can dish it out. Just do it nice and simple. Chris Bird got off easy. Kevin Hansen is up next. His hands drop, you can take position. Anytime the guy keeps his hand in the hut position, smack him here. Break in here. If you're too close, ball. Okay, and that was just a light tap. How old are you? 19, sorry. 19, my daughter's 21. That's why I practice on young fellas. Hits to the temple which could kill a man, uh, hit through the nose, up here, right under there, 
which would drive hard enough to drive portion the nose portion back up into the brain and, and kill an individual. Where I'm looking in here is his nose, see? I straighten him up. This gets into here. And I kill him. When these legs come in, tap his nuts four or five times. Go like that with your heels in his balls. Go and hit his nuts. Does that feel good? No, Sergeant. You're doing that. Where do you think his mindset's going? Out the window. To stop his from choking. Then you choke the out. Take out his right eyeball and feed it to that. Just crossing your legs means when you cross four times in the balls, choke him out as you're doing it, poke out his eye and do it. Get out of here. Practice. Kill him. And if he resists, take his eye out. We weren't in a wrestling match. It was kill and maim, not hurt and shake hands. So to this day, none of us know how to do that. We're teaching them how to tactically kill the enemy using stealth movement and overwhelming superiority of mental attitude. The Devil's Brigade claimed they owned the night. Patience, stealth, and sudden violence was what it took to stay alive. In a close combat situation, you either kill the enemy or he kills you. That is the real deal, okay? And if you cannot find it in yourself to utilize that skill, you will lose in the real deal. Oh, yeah, we knew how to use it and where to use it. But uh, it's one thing to do that and use it on a dummy, and another thing to uh, perhaps uh, sneak up on a German sentry and put your arm around his neck and and stick them in the, in the uh, kidneys. I never worried about the, you know, the morality or the, any of that stuff. I just knew that I was coming back and I was pretty sure the other guy wasn't. First action, you can hold the knife so the blade's parallel ground, and you come in here. See, when I hit him, what happens to his body? Okay, that's the one side, here. Okay, that's the other side. All right, what's in this area right here? What's right here? Kidneys. I'd say I, any real infantry soldier has to learn how to use a, a weapon like this because if, if it comes to this kind of weapon, then this is all you have. If you're not, the people we're going against definitely know how to use one of these. So all the training was done with naked weapons, naked bayonets, naked knives. We had the knives, and knives are very, very sharp. So he told you that getting cut was not a big deal. Getting killed was a big deal. You might get a cut, a superficial cut of some kind, but you were gonna kill this person. When I come on the guy, in. We were taught how to down. come in back of, of a soldier, an enemy soldier, and pull his head back and <clears throat> cut the juggler. Um, and or how to do that effectively by uh, putting your knee in the back of, of the soldier, and how to do it very quietly. You get it in and you bury it up to the thumbprint. In order to get out, you're gonna go back and forth like this inside the guy, viscerate a big hole to pull it out, because how many guys ever got it a goat? A deer. 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 What happens to it? Okay. It sucks on, so you make a hole, right? Eviscerate, pull it out. Damn, you gotta love this, right? So and most of these men do. Like Violence is their trade, and they can handle Wolf's casual cruelty, with one exception. Kevin Hansen is leaving. Something's come up, he says. I've got to go. These guys were tough. This equipment that they use is raggedy. It's by, by today's standards. I mean, if we were using our own equipment, this would be easy. And their equipment was raggedy, you know, all this wool and this heavy equipment, and these guys were tough, hands down. I mean, these guys had to be the toughest people in the war. Despite the best efforts of the program producers, Kevin went home at the end of the third day. The hand-to-hand -hand combat hurt him. Bill Wolf scared him. Too intense, too angry, too real. Yeah, well, moral of the story is don't send your sons and daughters off to war if you don't want them to learn to 